kid and you're asking like, what do we do about? Is you sign a contract with someone. So real quick, before you did that, did you... More than 30 years. I got my real estate license in the... Um, and your your origin story. Is that he uh, he made an age joke the last time we were... Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna use that KUKA. You know, I, I'm a little more strict with what I'm, I'm looking at. Uh, Um, sometimes the numbers don't work, okay? And you have to go creative, okay? Um, and you have to, with creative deals, purchase price don't really matter too much. You just have to make sure that it cash flows, okay? So, Terry Penny says, less bullshit. Most definitely less bullshit, all right? I understand that. So I think that's what she means is just in, in the suburbs, there's less bullshit, period. And I 100% agree with her, all right? So that's the reason why, you know, uh, let me, I always forget when I have to go over here. All right, finding out what buyers want for a, as far as a return on investment, ask them. It goes back to the, exactly what we did. Ask them, uh, get to know what they pay, uh, having experience working with them and working in the market really helps. Ask people, other wholesalers in the, in the market that you're working. If you don't know buyers, JV with other wholesalers. You can always JV with me. You can JV with, with Khalif. Me and Khalif's JV on a lot of deal. Okay, a lot of deals. Okay, and I, I JV with a lot of other people here as well, but you know, that's where building relationships are important. Okay. If you do want to JV with me, by all means, give me a call. My number is right here at the bottom and my emails scrolling through the banner here. Okay. I'm happy to work with anybody who wants to work with me um, and kind of go from there. So uh, again, getting to know your buyer, talk with other wholesalers, JV with other wholesalers. All right. Here's a big one right here. What are your VIP buyers and how to get them? VIP buyers, we've already talked about this a little bit. They are buyers that you network with and that you trust. Okay. These are buyers that I can go on an appointment. I can bring them with on an appointment with me, walk them through there. We go outside, they give me their number, they walk away and I try to negotiate the deal. Okay. Is that right? Is that shit? I never market that property because guess what? I just got my buyer telling me exactly what he paid for it. I just need to get underneath his price. I've done that many times. I have a few, quite a few, uh, I have a few VIP buyers that I, that I can do that with. If you are a buyer, becomes a wholesaler VIP buyer. Okay. That's how you'll get more deals. All right. Um, someone can send you, uh, someone I can send pictures to as well. And they'll give me a renovation budget. They'll give me an idea of what they pay for it, whatever the case may be. Okay. You know, building trust, networking, you know, uh, networking with them, building trust with them and so on and so forth. All right. What do you think about this, Khalif? Yeah. Um, I just want to speak, I guess, from the wholesaler perspective Yeah, with uh, the buyers is um, just to kind of bring something back around that you spoke on earlier is if we send you a deal, um, it's just like press, right? They say there's no such thing as bad press. Yeah. You know, it, we're, it doesn't hurt our feelings. Um, there's no love loss. If it's not the deal for you, just right. give us, you know, the feedback that you can give us. Or just let mm -hmm. us know it's not the deal for you because uh what we don't want to do is you know cause ourselves to give you uh a blindness to our deals coming across oh 100 uh, <laughs> i've had i've had deals where you know i have buyers who i send a lot of volume to don't really get any feedback and then you know i go to open up a property and 
they're there through another wholesaler and it's like i sent you this deal um yep. so now at that point you got you know another wholesaler in between me and the seller so mm-hmm. you could have potentially saved yourself some money on the acquisition. Um, and, you know, I take some responsibility for that is we should probably be um, taking the next step outside of just emailing the deals to actually personally reaching out to our buyers. But yep. um, I've seen that more times than I, I care to count where, you know, I, I've sent a VIP of mine, a deal um, that they got from someone else, you know, and they liked it. And ended up mm-hmm. moving forward and it could have saved them, you know, a, a couple of grand or in some cases, maybe tens of thousands of dollars because it was such a good deal that, you know, I initially sent out that, you know, somebody was able to partner with me and, and still make some money. Oh, exactly. 100 percent. And that's the thing is, is that you have you work with these other wholesalers. Now, when I JV with somebody and I'm sending it out to my buyers, there's other wholesalers out there that will add their fee on top okay and there's nothing wrong with that okay but how i'm i decided that i'm running my business where i don't want to add my fee on top i want to work with people that have direct to seller and i want to we both put it out at the same price and we split the fee whatever that is okay whatever we agree upon we split it, whether it be 50, 50, 60, 40, whatever the case may be. Okay. Normally a normal wholesale deal for me is we split this fee 50, 50. Okay. There are extenuating circumstances and things like that. But a simple fact is, is that I want to advertise it at the same price because I've had it in the past and I've been screwed before where I added my fee on top. We've gone through the deal halfway through the deal, halfway through closing. My buyer sees the original seller's advertisement selling it for five grand less, 2,500 less, whatever, the, whatever it was. And now they're upset with me. They won't purchase another property with me. They may close on this because they want the deal, but they won't purchase another property for me. So I've made it a point in my business practice to do that. I'm not saying that putting, adding your fee on top is not a good because I tell other wholesalers to do that when I do my advertising. Okay. I'm just not, when I JV on a deal, uh, unless I have a direct buyer right there, then and there, and, and my buyer knows that I'm adding my fee on top where I I'm fully transparent. Unless that happens, I'm going to make it a, a, a habit where we advertise the same thing. And that's it. So you have any uh, thoughts on that, Khalif? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's kind of um, just like you said on the other on the other side of things. Um, when you work with a wholesaler, and that's their preferences, their prices, their price. Um, and if they want to work with you, they instruct you to add your fee on top. Um, yep. You know, if you're confident and, and can put it out there and procure a buyer. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. Just from the fact that your buyer needs to do their due diligence Mm -hmm. um, on the deal. And if the deal makes sense at the price that you advertise it at, um, it shouldn't matter. Um, and my buyers tell me all the time, you know, if the deal makes sense for me at the number you send it over, I don't care what you make on it. Right. So, um, that's that's the kind of people you want to deal with because at the end of the day you know this is our bread and butter this is what we're doing to feed our families we're not trying to screw anybody or anything of that nature we're just trying Mm -hmm. to put deals out there and if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't Um, exactly there always be you know there always be more deals Um, just to your point I've had that same situation happen you know Mm -hmm. I've had deals where I've been instructed to put my fee on top and you know, there's no way to prove it, but my marketing at a higher price might have procured a buyer to that wholesaler initially at a lower yep. price. So you can't get caught up in the messy middle. It's just, yeah. uh, you know, volume moving on to the, the next one if this one doesn't work or, you know, celebrating this one working and still moving on to, to try to get the next one done. Yep. 100 percent. 
and that's where developing these relationships help. So um, again, you know, let, let's move on a little bit. We're gonna go to how to find a good title company real quick. I'm gonna move pretty a little bit faster um, just cause we're running out of time here. Uh, how to find a good title company, ask other wholesalers, ask your buyers, network at the real estate meetups. And then just try them, try them on a deal. See how they are. Oh, you don't like them. You don't like how they did this or whatever. Maybe it was just that deal. Try another one. See how they are. Okay. You know, how to talk to them. Ask them, do they do assignment of contracts? That's huge. It's most important. Okay. Do they work with other whole, with wholesalers? Okay. If they don't even know what a wholesaler is or what an assignment contract is, move on. Okay. It's not your title company. They have to be investor friendly. Okay. Um, you know, and then full, just ask them what's the process to start title work. 90% of the time it's all through email. 99% of the time. Okay. Uh, the process, uh, yeah, the process of what should I tell the seller and the buyer? Okay. So here is you're in the middle. You got your buyer over here, your seller over here. Okay. You can't put them together because the seller, you don't want the seller knowing what the buyer is buying it for or anything like that in most cases anyways. So you just keep each one updated on the process. Make sure the buyer sends in their EMD deposit because even though you don't, you, you may or may not require a EMD with the seller, you better require a EMD with your buyer. Okay. Follow up with the title company to make sure you're the, they deposit the EMD. Okay. Earnest money deposit. That's what EMD stands for. If you don't know, I uh, ask the buyer on how much of a notice they need from the title company for a closing date. All right. So we're going to go through this whole process. If they're using hard money, if they're using whatever the case may be, you're going to get everybody on the email chain. You're not going to put the seller on the email chain. Okay. But you will put the buyer in there because the buyer knows everything and you're the only link to the seller. Okay. So you're going to do the closing date. You're going to do all that. If the title company asks for the seller's information, that's perfectly fine. They will reach out to the seller on a separate email with you. Okay. Have, make sure they include you on that email. All right. Most importantly, keep the seller updated in the process. Most people, this is what happens. They get the signed contract. Now I got to go find a buyer and here's the seller over here. Like, Hey, hi, we signed this contract. I, I haven't heard from you in a week, two weeks, three weeks. Are we closing? No, I don't know. Tell me what, what's going on. Now they're getting hit up from other wholesalers because you're marketing this and you got some bad wholesalers who's trying to go behind your back to get, to give them a higher offer. Okay. And they for, uh, now you get yourself into a situation. I say it as a situation because there's ways to get around that. But the thing is, is that you, as long as you build good rapport with that seller. Okay and you keep them updated in the process, they're not gonna listen to anybody else. I'm gonna tell you that right now. They will actually tell you when somebody calls them with another offer. So just keep that in mind, all right? So most important is keep the seller updated on the process. You have to do that. Make sure the seller sees the seller closing documents and not the buyer closing documents. There is a difference. The seller closing documents will not have the assignment fee in there. The buyer closing documents will. Okay. So it'll be a, there's a seller statement and a buyer statement on the buyer statement is where you'll see your fee. The seller statement, they will not. And you have to make sure a good title company will know to do that. Okay.
There was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room